Hi, I'm Harold Simmons. Welcome to my video presentation for my essay about Flaherty O'Connor. I'm focusing on Mr. Head from The Artificial and Julian's mother from Remember Them Riley Must Converge. I decided to focus on them and how they are racist and what this does to them and also what it gives them. Well, it gives them something because they lost something in their life and racism was able to give them back. My thesis for this essay is that Mr. Head and Julian's mother are racist because they both lost me in their life that racism is able to give them back. Starting with Mr. Head, he, he loses his wife and his daughter. They both die in quick succession. There's a couple years between both. Between both their deaths. And he now lives with his son, Nelson. And what, and what he loses is not just his wife and his daughter, but he also feels like he loses control over his life. He feels like he has no real control because his wife and his daughter dies, and his wife and his daughter die, and now he's to take care of this child by, all by himself. And in a desperate grasp, in a, in a desperate grasp for control, he enters almost in an unspoken competition with his son, Nelson about who can wake up the earliest, especially for this important, especially in the story about waking up earliest to get to, to get to the train. Um, and he has a hard time winning these challenges, especially because he wakes up at, at 3.30, goes back and takes a nap, and he wakes up to the smell of bacon, which to the smell of bacon, which means Nelson is up and cooking breakfast already. Racism is able to give him this power and control that he that he desires through being able almost to control yeah control like what a black person is in a way and he does this he you know, starts this on 255 when he dehumanizes a black man by making him experience when he says to the man to a man across the aisle from him that was his first negro he is referring to his son nelson Before this, a black man walks across. A black man walks across him and his son. I mean, um, yeah, a black man walks across, across him and his son. And he asks his son, "What was that?" Nelson says, "A man." And that's when, that's when Mr. tells tells him to cross out from him. That's his first Negro. And he dehumanizes him because he makes him an experience, like a roller coaster ride. That's an experience, and he's changed. It essentially changed him into a roller coaster ride because he doesn't, yeah, because that's how he's able to control people and that's how he's able to get control of his life. And he's also able, and through this, he's able to get control of other people's lives. On page 252, he also celebrates running a black man out of the county, out of the county that he lives in. He says to his son Nelson, there hasn't been a Negro in this county since we won one out 12 years ago. And that was before he was born. He says this during an argument with his son about, about whether he's seen a Negro before and if, and, and, or, and if it's his first visit to Atlanta or his second. Again, as you see in the argument, he's grasping for control because I said he's, he doesn't feel like he has his control anymore. Now, Joanne's mother, the reason why she's racist is a little different because her is less about trying to grasp for control, but instead of trying to regain her, regain her status, her heritage. And Joanne's mother, yeah, she loses her, she loses her status because her family used to be very rich. They were called the God Highs. As she says on page, yeah, as she says on page 408, your great grandfather had a plantation with 200 slaves, and that's a lot of slaves at that time. It was also meant that it also meant that her family was very wealthy because slaves cost a lot of money back then. So she takes pride in fact that she 
that, that she used to be very rich, and then, which leads to all her t talking about how many slaves she used to have. But she also does this for her son, Julian, who completely rejects this, but not for a good reason. And many times in the story, you'll hear her say, you'll hear her talk about wishing how he could be in the house. How he could be in the house that the God Highs had lived in. Wishing that he could, basically wishing that he could enjoy what she was able to enjoy. And honestly, this is, and I understand where she's coming from with this. This is a normal parental, this is a parent, this is normal for, yeah, this is normal. Because a parent usually would want her, his or her son or daughter to enjoy what they weren't able to. 